I have two neat baking treats for you today. One is lemon biscottis, and the other is a special brownie mix that I'll explain to you later on in the show. The first thing we have to do to prepare the lemon biscottis is take a piece of aluminum foil and fold it up about two or three inches and over, again the same, turn it over and make a tunnel and give yourself at least about three inches of space. And what you're going to do is make four of them and put it on a bake tray and you can dip it on the sides to make a little groove so the batter doesn't come out. And this is the first step in making the biscottis. Let's start with the first three ingredients. First, we have a cup of oil. And then four eggs. and sugar, cup of sugar. And you're going to blend it for a few minutes. want it to fly all over the place. It's uh, two and a half cups of flour. And you'll then add a few teaspoons of baking powder. Lemon extract, very important. Some people like other flavors, but I do prefer the lemon. And then make sure you just go around the sides and get the flour into the batter. And there you have it. This is all very nicely blended in. Okay, don't forget we have four tunnels to fill. So you want to make sure that you have enough batter for each one of them. So I start out with a little in each one and then I will spread out more as we go along. It's important that you spread it out from the center because otherwise you'll have some bulging biscottis. So just spread them as evenly as you can from the middle out. And there you go. Okay, good. And now I'm going to put it in a 350 degree oven for just 15 minutes. So you can watch it carefully and then I'll show you the next step.
I left it in a couple of extra minutes because it's important that you tap it and you'll see that right here, this is bouncing back and that'll let you know that it's done. So you'll let it cool for a while now before we do the next step. After letting it rest for around five or 10 minutes so that it isn't so hot, you'll take and you'll start to peel it off and put it on a rack so that it'll cool a lot faster. And uh, just be very careful and make sure that you hold it so that it doesn't split there. And so, so as you can see, some of the um, biscottis are smoother than others, but the frosting mix will just cover right over it. So stay tuned. I'm gonna start off with a cup of confectioner sugar and I'll add a tablespoon of milk and I'll start with a half a teaspoon of vanilla and see how the consistency works. And if it's a little bit dry, I'll add another half a teaspoon of the vanilla and just a tad more milk. And just make sure that it's not too thin you want to make sure that you have some consistency and that looks like it's working up into a good mix. Okay, so there you have the topping, the frosting mix, and I'll show you how we work it. Okay, so we'll start out with one strip and just gently move the frosting around. Just a thin coat. You don't want to make it too liquidy because uh, it'll make the mixture the batter will get too soft. And then when you put the sprinkles on, they could possibly bleed and you don't want that. So there you have your topping and you don't want to wait too long to put the sprinkles on. I do have confetti sprinkles and then because this is the end of January, we're going into the month of February, I thought it would be nice to have some of the Valentine sprinkles. So we'll do a, a few of each. There's this, and these. And if you keep your mixture, your frosting mixture, not too wet, you'll find that these little balls will really stand out. And you can do a little bit more on the sides if you'd like. I'm just doing it to show you how you prepare it initially. Now, you want to take and cut about a half, three quarters of an inch and You want to do it right away and then give them a chance to dry. Beautiful. Okay, so we have one, two, and 
three. How's that? Here's another strip and uh, I just added the frosting mix. And you have to work pretty quickly because the um, frosting does dry and you want to make sure that the sprinkles adhere to the mix. And if you'd like, you can go around the sides and put more frosting. I tend to just do it on the top and just make some nice clean cuts and it's so simple and you get such a large quantity good there you have it here's the finished product and i wanted to make sure that you saw everything because in a few short minutes, they'll be delivered to family members and they will be devoured. So try it, they are so easy. Enjoy. The next treat is a gourmet brownie. And I'm going to start out with an eight inch square aluminum pan. And I'm going to take parchment paper and line the pan with 15 pieces of masking tape. And I'm just going to show you the beginnings and you'll see how easy it is. You just take and put it underneath the edge all around and make sure that you really press it in and mold it so that the mixture will hit every corner. So that's the beginning. Now in the interest of time, I have put one together. So here are 15 pieces of masking tape molded with the parchment paper in an eight inch aluminum pan. Now you're ready to begin. I'm going to take the first five ingredients. This is almond butter, and that is one cup. And you add one egg with the almond butter, along with some agave nectar, which that's a half a cup of agave nectar. And then a teaspoon of, there's your agave nectar, and a teaspoon of salt, and, oh, excuse me, a half a teaspoon of salt. We don't want to overdo it. And a half a teaspoon of baking powder. Make sure that's that. So you take everything and you mix it up as well as you can. And I would recommend that you do it with a wooden spoon. Make sure you have it blended in very, very well, like so. Now you can beat it with an electric mixer, but I find a hand beating with a wooden spoon is absolutely fine. Look at that. It came out beautiful. And now what we'll do is we'll add the chocolate chips. And that's 10 ounces. That's a cup and a half, along with a cup of chopped walnuts. And you mix that 
until everything is immersed. You take heaping spoonfuls and place them in the parchment lined pan. And you'll be baking this in a 325 degree oven for about 35 minutes. And you'll check it with a toothpick in the middle. It'll come out a little sticky and that's just fine because this has to rest for two hours. So you put this in and then take a spreader and make sure you get into the corners. Now we're ready to put it in the oven. See how simple it was? And again, 325 degrees for about 33 to 35 minutes. And we'll check it with a toothpick at that time. Okay, the 30, 35 minutes is done. And now we're gonna go and see what it looks like. And don't forget that it's important to make sure that it's brown around the edges, okay? And I have to stick a toothpick into the middle and make sure that it comes out like crumbs, which it did, okay? And now it sits and rests for two hours. So you have to be patient. Well, the two hours have passed. The brownies are well cool. And I tore off the um, masking tape and I'm lifting the parchment and it's very easy to remove this delicious brownie treat from the paper, the parchment paper. And it's so easy to cut. If you'd like, you could also cut it and make it into triangles, but I prefer the regular block brownies, the squares. And this is what it looks like. It tastes tremendous. And uh, I'm sure if you have a gathering and want to bring this to a party, it will be looked upon most favorably. And uh, the biscottis are also another easy treat and as you can see it comes out so nicely i i recommend you try both of them and i look forward to coming back again real soon to show you more easy recipes and uh, if you would like, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me at WCAT. And I would be glad to try something that you would like me to do on the show. So have a wonderful day. Enjoy the gourmet brownies and the beautiful biscottis. And see you next time. 
This epilogue is dedicated to my husband, Merrill, the videographer of this show. And I just want to let him know how much I appreciate his wonderful expertise.